Welcome to the Michigan Golfer Show. Join us each week as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great game. We're here with uh, Jack Berry, our good friend and lifetime journalist award winner for the PG of America. We're here at the uh, um, Michigan Golf Hall of Fame. Uh, we have an induction ceremony today, so that's why I'm wearing a tie, <laughs> along with just being a good friend of Jack here. So we're dressing up for the occasion. Uh, we're doing a little short interview today with Jack and his illustrious career. And Jack, I'd like to start off with uh, taking you back to 1961, when I think you were a kind of a cub reporter, so to speak, <laughs> for the Detroit Free Press. Yes, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you got a little story. You went to the Oakland Hills, 1961. Correct. And they had a little tournament there called the U.S. Open. Correct. And correct me if I'm wrong, you ran into Ben Hogan in the locker room. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about that conversation. Well, uh, Ben, uh, John Walter yes. was at the news, and I was at the free press. And uh, John knew Ben and introduced me to Ben. And Ben says, how come there wasn't anything in the Sunday paper about this <laughs> tournament? <laughs> so that was my introduction to, <laughs> to Ben what, Hogan. And, and tell me, what was the answer you gave him? Because he didn't realize it, right? <laughs> You didn't have a paper, <laughs> or you didn't work on Sunday, right? The pre-press, right. Right. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. He, he, didn't, he didn't get that, right? <laughs> you didn't work Sunday. John tried to protect me and say, well, Ben, uh, you know, Jack's got family, and, and, and <laughs> they don't work on Sunday, and I said, okay. <laughs> hey, how was that tournament? You know, uh, well, my, your first my, other, my, other, my first Open, yeah. 10 years after he won right. in 51. You're right. Uh, and and uh, Joe Dye, who was the, uh, the commission, well, the head man of the United States Golf Association, yes. and... and, uh, and we're inside, me and a couple other writers are inside the room following Hogan up uh, 18. Yeah. And he comes over. Yeah, you know. right. <laughs> yeah did that one arm's length, right? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the least of their problems, right? Well, they had a guy like that too over in, in Scotland because uh, when in 1972, my first open championship yep. that I was fortunate to go to, uh, it was uh, Jack and, and uh, Lee Trevino. Right. And uh, Tony Jacklin were Tony Jacklin that right. looked like he was going to maybe, yeah. maybe win it. And we passed by a tent where you could hear the voiceover, and they really spouting off for Tony. But Tony was, Ooh, he was diving, yeah. and it was Jack and Trevino. So uh, we're following me, and several other writers are following Jack up uh, about the seventeenth hole, and the head guy from the. Uh, RNA came and assaulted us. <laughs> we were too close. Too, too, you know, it wasn't far away from the road. Wasn't bothering Nicholas at all. Right. Yeah, he always <laughs> does something. Well, that was 50 years ago, 1961, when you made your debut, so to speak, at covering a major golf tournament. I'm going to bring you back 50 years to 2021. You were there when Oakland Hills um, made their. Uh, debut of their new golf course, of the new South Golf Course, the renovation with Gil right. Hans. And yes. I know you were there and interviewed Gil Hans and Steve Brady. Yeah. Tell me your impressions of uh, that now that you've seen the, you saw the Oakland Hills uh, in in the 50s and the 60s, and now you're seeing this new well, rendition. Well, I've, I've uh, seen it mainly on uh, on television. Uh, I've had a lot of offers to go and right. and see it and get around, and, and, and I will do that, but they have taken out a lot of trees, right. and uh, you can see the uh, that magnificent clubhouse from uh, practically everywhere on the say. golf course That's now. They say. And it's just uh, more open, and will it be more difficult? Uh, who knows, because now they've got another big factor in them uh, getting back in the, uh, in the picture so far, or right. as, as it is, is uh, the, uh, you know, getting the plumbing under the under the all the, the greens. The sub air system, yeah. right? That the, yeah. the master right. was the first Remember to innovate. Remember, the previous was the PGA or or the Open at Oakland Hills, where the the bunkers were flooded and uh, you know. Up to 1996, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. with that overnight rain on Correct. Wednesday. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, when. That's when <laughs> the great one that uh, they sold out the 
the tent of, of goodies. They sold every, everything. We had hot weather, cold weather, <laughs> right. rain, and everything right. else. And all the umbrellas were sold that week, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. You know, Jack, it's, it's been um, fun following your career, and I thank you for all the support you've given the younger journalists uh, along the way. And I know you're very instrumental in my career in terms of Michigan golfer. You know, you've seen a lot of changes in how golf is covered, and you've been remarkable how you've You've uh, done so many interviews, hundreds of interviews with Art, um, compiling um, interviews of some of the game's Which best I here. Which I enjoyed, yes. Dan and, Pohl and Meg Mallon. Right. And, you know, and did you ever golfers. envision yourself being a YouTube uh, interviewer <laughs> no, like that? No. No, the days of, you know, when I started, we were uh, pencil and, and paper right. and those little hand, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> recorders. And it's gone through, now we're into the... 28th century, I think it is. It's uh, for we who are a bit older, it right. is a lot more difficult <laughs> than nowadays. That's right, and it's uh, changed uh, changed so much. What What do you like about the? You know, you still uh, on top of the game, both here in Michigan and nationally. But uh, you know, what strikes you about covering the game today in terms of uh, the people who are covering it and writing it? Is it you think it's become more of a you know, just more of a visual medium and, uh, and uh, there's well, it's less been, of emphasis been, on the words? Been much so because uh, newspapers have all been killed yeah. by uh, television. Uh, it's uh, hardly a, uh, as I say, I, I read the Grand Rapids paper on the right. Sunday morning right. after right. Michigan uh, started a noon football game right. and won easily and there was nothing in the Grand Rapids press on Sunday. And that's, uh, you know, news, when I started, we had a lot of guys in Boston, gosh, they had three or four papers. Right. New York had a load of papers. Chicago right. had more papers. We even, we had the Detroit Times sent too. It was the News Times and the Free Press. And that, so we've uh, lost all that. Television right. has much more Roman time, right. though, like the Golf Channel. I mean, they're on forever. And they have done uh, a good job. You know, I, I like... Uh, I like that when they had uh, Navalo was was on Golf Frank Channel. Navalo. I think it's yep. on CBS now. Yeah, and uh, uh, Brendan, come on, give me his name. Uh, you oh, know, uh, Chambly. Chambly. Yeah, yeah I Brandon, like him. Right. And uh, David Duvall has been on. And right. Like that, and you get more, you know, a lot more out of the the game and how it's being played right. and everything else. So I I like that, and I like that. Uh, just saw the other night the replay of the uh, St. Andrews uh, film in which our man Tom Doak uh, takes you all the way around the yeah, that's right uh, around the old golf the old course and so that you know I enjoy what they can do right in that and now uh, now that we're getting uh, the the mortgage uh, rocket mortgage tournament at your Detroit Golf Club right. has made the two Detroit papers realize that there's a PGA Tour now. It's amazing. And, right. and uh, they had pretty much kissed off the uh, the women over in, in Grand Rapids with right. a great tournament and terrific champions and right. everything else. Yeah. And, and a couple of Symmetra tournaments. And so uh, golf is getting more notice in the papers that still exists right. <laughs> in Michigan. And, I bet you still appreciate the fact, like the Golf Channel, um, Jack will have uh, journalists uh, like Tim Rosefer, right. uh, past president like you of the Golf Writers Association of America, yep. and uh, also uh, Jaime Diaz, who's been a fellow there journalism you know. board. Yep. I mean, talk a little bit about that. Isn't it nice to see the visual medium bringing in people who cover the beat on a daily Very, very much so. Well, they're the guys, uh, usually people who start out in, in uh, television now, they've never worked at a newspaper. Right. They don't understand right. all the background that goes into it. Jaime is terrific, at, and the uh, all during the uh, uh, Ryder Cup we yep. awesome. He was uh, wonderful, and uh, I really enjoy what he what he right. puts into it. And we miss Tim Rosefort, who sure. died a, a year or so ago, and uh, he was another good, solid newspaper right. guy in, in in Florida area. And then uh, he went on to television and uh, did. He had a he must have had a. Uh, 
more telephone numbers than the right. uh, Manhattan phone directory. He had, one heck, he, had of, he had one heck of a contact list. Is that right? His cell yeah. phone. Yeah. I mean, you could you could ask Tim for contact. He'd have it. Yeah. Hey, Jack. You know, go back and I bet it hasn't really changed. But you know, what was the essence and what was your you know approach to covering a tournament? Say you were doing a game story. I think a lot of people don't realize you know a golf writer whether you're covering a Buick Open or the yeah. Masters. You know what the days are like. What, what's the day like to to end up with a good story at the end at the end of that round? Well, it starts more uh, earlier in the week than yeah. when when they're practicing. On uh, usually they come in on a, on a Tuesday and yeah. then they play in a pro am and and uh, so you talk to them and see what you know who's hot, who's not, right? And, and uh, you know you get more out of them that way and and it. Uh, you know, helps you in, in the stories that you're going to be writing on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right. and Sunday papers. Uh, <laughs> they got one, one guy at, uh, who was a little tough at the Buick and won a couple of times, Julius Boros. Yeah. And Julius would get there and, and he'd sit back and after you go over his birdies and bogeys and right. so forth. That enough? That enough? That enough? That enough? <laughs> he, he wanted to get Pretty out antsy, of that huh? chair. Pretty know, antsy, huh? Pretty antsy. Whoa, wait a minute. That's funny. <laughs> we want to, got a few more questions here. <laughs> so. And how, what about, what about, uh, I know you, you always gave me some good advice, but didn't you say once you had the lead, everything kind of flowed after that? that was yes. A, you know, and you had a, you had a, work through the day to see if what lead would work, right? Well, and, and obviously who was leading. And, yeah, you hope you got a good inspiration. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've had a lot of good uh, ones. Something that you saw on the course. Is yeah. The way, the way it uh, happened. And who yeah. who inspired you, Jack, as a golf writer or even a journalist? I mean, um, I mean, I know you've always been well read, not only in golf but yes. in, in uh, politics yeah. and state of the state of the world. Well, I was lucky that uh, you know I grew up. My dad worked for the Tigers. Right. He was a traveling secretary from. 1940 on, and, and uh, so uh, it uh, enriched our family when they right. won the World Series in 1945, beat the Cubs. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> in seven games, my hero Hank Greenberg, who was right. my all-time favorite, right. home run, and uh, my dad got the same uh, bonus out of, of the World Series pot as the players always voted him a full share, right. so that paid off for our house. Nice. For, for, first house and that was uh, like that and then H.G. Uh, uh, Salsinger was the yeah. it was the columnist and the uh, sports editor at the news and he was my dad's uh, friend and and I just I like to read I like to read right. the read the papers and, uh, and at back at that time we had you know good writers in, in every city in, right. in the country and uh, now uh, you're missing those words right uh, I just feel like I worked in the during the golden era yeah. of newspaper right. writing, yeah. and uh, it's really unfortunate that it, it's disappeared right. so much and the papers have all gone. But uh, a few are left. They're like Jaime. Right, Jaime is wonderful, and he was at the New York Times, and uh, he had uh, the other guys. Start from Boston, Chicago, right, all over, Milwaukee, even Milwaukee. Um, yeah, those days uh, are sadly, sadly gone. But I did. Well, you stayed in the game, though. Yeah. You stayed in the game, cup and doing your bed, which is nice. Well, I enjoyed like the Ryder Cup. But man, I watched that from. I know from, <laughs> from start to finish. And as you know, because you and I have been blessed being at a number of them. You really can't beat watching the Ryder Cup on television, particularly on the singles day, right? Right. It's nice right. to have the atmosphere, right. but uh, you can't beat wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Well, you and I uh, were over there for the uh, PGA. That's and right. It's a doggone difficult course for, for spectators it is, right. to see. And uh, I don't care about Mr. Kohler and his thousand bunkers on that golf course. I, I think that that's ridiculous so that every place is regard as you know I felt so, kind of felt sorry for uh, for uh, Dustin Dun Johnson yeah Dustin Johnson but he and his caddy never looked at or read this the uh, information in, in, the, right. in the, the locker, locker room, room. everybody right say that everything is being regarded as right. a bunker they didn't do that right 
He's gotten a lot smarter over the years. I, 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 I kind of thought he was a Dumbo uh, for a while, right. but he is maybe a, his uh, soon-to-be father-in-law, <laughs> right, <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. Right. Right. <laughs> I think it's helped him an awful lot. Well, I'm going to hand off the baton, so to speak, to our, our colleague and friend, Greg Johnson. But I want to make sure this has a, been a, a great uh, conversation with Jack Ferry on his 90th birthday. And I do want the record show with Jack. I was one of the first people to give you the card. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't forget, and I've got, I, got, I got it on record. Well, thanks to Terry and to uh, Art McCafferty, who called me up one day and asked me if I'd come out and have lunch and have a place. They asked me if I thought a, a magazine would have a chance, and it did. <laughs> and it's while well, the magazine part is gone now, it still lives thanks to art. And, Absolutely. And Terry is always a good columnist. Well, oh, that's nice of you to say. So, and I do say, too, I always like Jack Berry's book back in 1993, Jack Berry's Guide to Michigan Golf. He is a published author. One of the best little synopsis, he called me one time, he wanted to know about a particular golf course in West Michigan. And of course, we want to say something nice about every course. And I gave him what I said. I said, you know, it's, there's not a lot there, Jack, but I said, I know you could come up with them. And he came up with the remark, this course has trees and trees give oxygen. <laughs> Classic Jack. Grow. All right. <laughs>